Good morning and praise the Lord. So privileged to come to you through Elevate TV this morning. My name is Pastor Smith. I'm the lead pastor of the Lord Reigns Ministries in Ruaka Town. And it's such a blessed morning. God has given us a new day that we may be able to hear his word. And I'm here to encourage someone. I'm here to lift someone. And basically, even as you start your day, I want you to be prayed uh, up so that your day will be a gracious day. Let us pray even as we begin the program. Uh, Father, we thank you for this shift program. I pray that in Jesus' name, you're going to bless your children, bless my viewers, heal the sick, and touch those who could be going through something, even as you do a new thing in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. This morning, my topic is, there is great hope for those who are in Christ. There is great hope for those who are in Christ. And I'm going to read two scriptures uh, that are going to be uh, my key texts uh, this morning. And one is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 10. I'm going to read this from NIV, 1 Timothy chapter 4, and verse number 10 from NIV. And the Bible says, the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength in his faithfulness. The confident, basically hope is that a confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength in his faithfulness. Glory to God. And I wanted to see, I wanted to see, um, allow me to just read. Allow me to be able to read this so that uh, we be blessed together. Uh, First Timothy, I think that was just a definition, <clears throat> but First Timothy chapter number four and verse number 10, as I already uh, said. Yeah, let me read this from uh, uh, New King James Version, sorry, New King James Version. The Bible says, for to this end, we both labor, we both labor and suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God. We trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men. Especially of those, you know, especially of those who believe. Read that again. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of, men, of all men, especially of those who who believe ladies and gentlemen as i said earlier that uh, hope in my own definition i've given it my own definition is the confident expectation of what god has promised what god has promised and its strength in his, his faithfulness strength in his faithfulness basically you have this faith in what god has promised and you have strength in his faithfulness. You know that our God does not fail. Our God keepeth his word. Our God does that which he has promised. Our God brings to pass that which he has promised. And I want you to see what the Bible says in the book of uh, Job chapter 14 and verse number 7. Job chapter 14 verse 7. For there is a hope for a tree if it is cut down. There is a hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again and that its tender shoot will not cease. There is hope for a tree. Glory to God. If it is cut down, although that tree has been cut down, there is hope it will sprout up again and that its tender shoot will not cease. Glory to God. I, do, I dare say that there is hope for the living, but there is greater hope for those who are in Christ Jesus. Listen, if you've gone through some kind of challenge, you've gone through some kind of issue, and we know we're just coming out of uh, the challenge of COVID-19, and people have gone through all manner of uh, issues, loss of jobs, you know, loss of businesses, marriages that have been affected. Some have gone through probably disease or sickness. And you know, the devil is preaching to you wherever you are. Whatever you're going through, the enemy is preaching to you and telling you, you have come to the end of yourself. 
You've come to the end of the road because you are the breadwinner in that family. You are, you know, the financier of uh, programs in your family, issues in your family. And the devil is telling you, you know, man, you are done. Listen, I wanted to hear this. There is a hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout up again. And that's what I'm saying. There is hope for the living, but there is greater hope for those who are in Christ. There is a hope. Anyone who doesn't even have Christ, there is a hope as long as they're on this side of life. You know, there are two dimensions uh, in, on earth. There is the dimension of the living and there is the dimension of the dead. Hallelujah. There is the dimension of the living. And now, we all, those who are alive today, if you've not died, you are in the dimension of the living. Now, as long as you've not crossed over to the dimension of the dead, there is hope. Although you have lost something, although you've gone, you've lost, you've gone through some challenge, although you've gone through some barrenness or gone through some darkness, as long as you are in the land of the living, you are in the dimension of the living, there is hope things will change tomorrow. There is a hope things will become better tomorrow. There is a hope there will be a shift and a turnaround. But you know what? There is even greater hope, greater hope for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because when you are in Christ Jesus, you're not living your own life. You're not living your own life. Glory to God. Because Paul says that, uh, you know, uh, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Paul is alluding to the fact that when Christ is in me, I don't live my own life. I live the life of Christ. I live a life of victory. I live a life of success. I am hopeful. Glory to God. You cannot lose, lose hope. You can't lose hope in life. You cannot lose hope in the destiny that the Lord already spoken to you about. There is hope for those who are living but I am insisting there is greater hope for those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you born again this morning? Do you have a relationship with God? There is greater hope because your life is not just your own life. You're not living according to what you know, according to your limitation. Men are limited. Hey, I'm a limited man without God. I'm just an ordinary man without God. But when Christ is in me, I become a supernatural being. I become a lifted being, a blessed being. Glory to God. And that's why I'm saying there is hope for those who are living, but there is greater hope for those who are in Christ. Allow me to share with you some four truths. I want to share with you some four truths about hope. And truth number one, we are heirs according to the promise. We are heirs according to the promise and uh, we're gonna uh, look at galatians chapter 3 and verse number 29 galatians chapter 3 and verse number 29 this morning i believe the lord is blessing you and i believe the lord is doing something new even in your life in jesus name you can't give up my brother you can't give up my sister because there is a hope and i'm bringing hope to you right now in jesus name galatians chapter 3 as I said, and verse number, uh, Galatian 3 and verse number 29, the Bible says, And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you are Christ, if you are born again, if you have received Christ in your life, if you belong to God, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so the truth is we are heirs according to the promise which promise is the bible talking about this takes me to genesis and chapter number 17 genesis chapter 17 glory to god thank you jesus and verse number genesis chapter 17 verse 6 and 7 this is what the bible says I'm reading from new king james version uh uh, Genesis chapter 17 verse 6 and 7 I will make you exceedingly fruitful I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you 
verse number seven says, and I will establish my covenant. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to God, to be, to, to, to be God, to you, uh, to be your God rather, and your descendants after you. Look at this. God make, made this covenant or made this promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, many years before Christ came. Ideally and initially, this covenant only covered Israel, was going to cover the God's special nation. But Jesus coming on the scene, he opened up, he opened up and we who are Gentiles, who, we who are not in the initial arrangement, if you like, we were co-opted. We were brought in through the, through the door of Christ. And that's why Galatians chapter 3 and verse now, number 29 says, those who are in Christ, those who are in Christ are beneficiaries of this promise. They are partakers of this promise. They are heirs according to the promise that was said, that was uh, given and released to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, verse 6 to 7. So if I am an heir according to the promise, I have everything to live for. I have everything to be excited for. I'm not just any other person. I am an heir. An heir is a crown prince. An heir is, uh, you know, uh, next in line, next in line to, to, to receive inheritance to receive royalty. Hallelujah. If God is calling us heirs according to the promise, then it does not matter what I'm going through right now. It doesn't matter the challenges, the limitations round about me right now because once an heir, always an heir. It is just a matter of time. I must inherit the promise in Jesus' mighty name. Number two truth is we have power to overcome setbacks. We have power to overcome setbacks. Glory to God. You have power within you to overcome setbacks. Job chapter 14 verse 7, the scripture that we saw, our key text, it says that, for there is hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again and that its tender shoot will not cease. Hallelujah. Or it will not fail. Although they cut you, Although they, you know, uh, they did all manner of things. Probably they sent you home from duty. Although there could be issues in your business, issues in your family. Listen to me. You need to know that you have power to overcome setbacks. What setbacks are around you? What setbacks are you going through right now? What setbacks have you encountered? There is power within you to overcome those setbacks. And think about this scripture in the book of Judges. Could we look at Judges? The book of Judges. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Judges, Judges, Judges. Hallelujah. In the book of Judges, chapter 16 and verse number 28, I want to show you something here. Very interesting uh, 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 scripture here. Judges, chapter 16 and verse number 28 this is what the bible says i'm gonna read this then solomon called samson sorry then samson called to the lord saying oh lord god remember me i pray strengthen me i pray just this one more time just this one more time that i may with one blow take vigilance on the philistines for my two eyes. And the Bible says, verse number 28, and Samson took hold of the two middle pillars of, which supported the temple and, and he braced himself against them, one on the right and the other on the, his left. And verse number 30, then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the lords and the people who were in it so the dead that he killed at his death were more than that than he had killed in his life a prayer that samson samson you know after he messed up with Goli uh, uh, delilah 
you know, um, and he defiled himself. They cut his hair and he became a powerless man. And they gorged, the Bible says they gorged the prince, uh, you know, came and uh, gorged his eyes and, and Samson was beaten, I, isolated and, you know, all manner of evil and wickedness was done against him. You can imagine your eyes being gorged yet you are alive. You can imagine what he went through. But then when Samson was brought in the temple, when the lords and the princes and, and all the leadership of Philistine were in session so that they could, uh, you know, he could entertain them, so to speak, as he could pull a very heavy lords. Hallelujah. But then Samson remembered that I cannot be doing this before these wicked uh, people. And he prayed unto the Lord in Judges chapter 16, verse 28. Oh Lord, although I'm a man of sin, I ask you to strengthen me one more time. Strengthen me one more time. Samson had gone through the setback of losing his eyes. He had gone through the setback of losing his strength. But then he cried out and said, Lord, strengthen me this just one more time. And the Bible records that he was able to go close to a pillar, the pillar that was holding the temple, and he pushed it with all his might. Meaning the strength came on him one more time. The strength, his wish, his prayer was granted. His prayer was answered. And Samson received strength. And boy, this man pushed those pillars. And the Bible says he killed more men in his death as he was dying than he had killed when he was alive. This is the God we serve. Of course, it's unfortunate that he, 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 he died. I, I, I wish he had prayed that God give me strength to kill these people, but don't kill me. I, I, I hope he had, had prayed, God give me new eyes. Hallelujah. And he could have said, God, may I push this thing to kill this Philistine, but save me. He could have repented and said, God, uh, may I be used as a vessel in your hands. But uh, be at, uh, as, as at me, it may, I want you to get the, just this point that Samson's strength was restored one more time. His strength was released upon him another time. And Samson was able to bounce back from his setback. Listen. The Lord is releasing, bouncing, a bouncing back anointing, bouncing back. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what pain you're going through. I don't know what issue you're going through. Listen to me, just like Samson, may you receive your strength one more time. May you receive grace one more time. May you receive elevation one more time. May you receive grace of God, anointing that breaks every yoke one more time in Jesus mighty name. Truth number four we have divine backup. We have divine backup. And this is uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. This is what Elisha said to uh, the young man who was helping him up when he was afraid about uh, the armies of Philistine again that had come against uh, the, the, the prophet and, and, and uh, you know threatening to kill him and this is what he said in verse number 16 he told the young man do not be afraid do not be afraid the prophet answered those who are with us are more than those who are with them do not be afraid those who are with us are more than those who are with them glory to god we have a divine backup you see uh the assistant the assistant of uh, elisha elisha there's contention whether this was gehazi or not there is that contention because it is it, it is said you know gehazi had died earlier on when uh, uh, leprosy struck him there is contention did god heal him or not and that's a story for another day but let's just because the bible doesn't give us the name the bible, the bible talks about his his assistant glory to god and he, he 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 goes out of the house and he find that the philistines the you know um, horses and chariots are and 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 with the with the marksmen with the army people on them on those horses and they were surrounding the man of god and what was the problem because the man of god would uh, uh, Elisha would be able by revelation and discernment he could be able to discern what the Philistines were planning against Israel and he would tell it 
to the king. And so the king would foil their plan. He would foil the plan of Philistines. And the king of Philistines was so mad. He was so mad. And he wanted to know what had happened. And one man said, you know what, king? No one has rebelled. No one is a sellout among us. But there is a prophet in Israel. His name is Elisha. He tells the king not only what is happening in Philistine, but even what goes on in your bedroom. Glory to God. And so the Bible says that the king of Philistine uh, decided to order the army to go and capture the man of God. So when the assistant is coming out in the morning, he saw that they were surrounded. It's so important that I give you the story so that you can understand. He saw that they were surrounded with the many, you know, uh, uh, soldiers on horses and, you know, and, and chariots. But then when he came back, he told his master, Elisha, the prophet, you know what? We are surrounded. The man of God did not even get perplexed. He did not fear because he knew his hope is in God. They might have come with the physical arsenal. They might have come with the weapons of warfare. You know, the, 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 you know, the war, the spears and all the arrows and all those kind of things. But he knew his strength was above. This is when he said this statement. Do not be afraid, young man. Uh, uh, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Glory to God. This reminds me also in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, in chapter number uh, 8, verse 31, famous scripture that we all know, I believe. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 31. Allow me to read this in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter number 8. Thank you, Jesus. And verse number 31. This is what the Bible says. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, if God is for us, who can be against us? Glory to God. The truth about our hope in God is that we have divine backup. If God be with us, who can be against us? The story I was telling you in 2 Kings chapter number 6, by the way, the man of God prayed and said, Oh Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And the Bible says, when his eyes was open, when his, the servant's eyes were open, he saw chariots of fire, chariots and horses of fire round about, and there were millions, and he marveled, glory to God. He understood why Elisha was calm, why Elisha was at peace, because he knew those that are for us are more than those who are with them, glory to God. Whatever you're going through, I need you to understand you have divine backup in God. It is just a matter of time you're going to bounce back. And lastly but not least, the hope of glory dwells in us. The hope of glory dwells in us. First John, first John, as I begin to conclude, first John and chapter number four and verse four. First John, the first letter of John. Thank you, Jesus. And chapter number four. In verse number four, glory to God. This is what the Bible says. You are of God. You are of God. Little children. And have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Mm very powerful scripture there you are of god little children you are of god my brother i don't know where you are right now you are of god my sister and i have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world glory to god in the book of uh, Col colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says christ in us the hope of glory. Christ in us. The hope of glory. Listen to my brother. Listen to my brother. There is a hope for those who uh, for those who are living. But there is greater hope for those who are in Christ Jesus. I have told you four truths. Number one, we are heirs according to the promise. We are going nowhere. Glory to God. Number two, we have power to overcome setbacks. Number three, Number three, we have divine backup. We have divine backup in Christ. 
And the last one is, the hope of glory dwells in me. The hope of glory dwells in us. Glory to God. So what must we do? What should we do to keep hope alive? I'll say this very quickly. Number one, follow the Lord wholeheartedly. Just believe in God wholeheartedly. Follow him wholeheartedly. Joshua chapter 14 verse 9, you can read in verse number nine, uh, 14 as well. You can read on your own. Or Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5. Number two, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it says, He who began a good work in you, he who has begun a good work in us, is able to accomplish it. He's able to bring it to accomplishment. You know, Mark chapter 11 verse 22, only believe, only believe. Have faith in God that your staff are turning around. Anything is in your life is turning around. And the last one, expect the best. Expect the best. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18 says, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Are you with me, my brother, this morning? There is greater hope for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's what I've been talking about. There is greater hope for those who are in Christ Jesus. I can't say more. I can't say nothing less. All I need to do is to pray for you. And are you there and you're not born again? I want you to receive Christ this morning because he's the beginning of hope. And why can't you just say after me, Lord Jesus, I give you my life today. I receive you. Be my Lord and Savior from today in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, there are numbers below the screen. I need you to call that so that someone can be able to walk with you even as I pray for you to be established. Anyone else that is going through anything, I'm praying, let there be supernatural hope coming into you right now. Do not give up because the power of God is coming upon you. May you walk out of that ashes. May you walk out of that challenge. May you become even a great man. May you bounce back because there is a hope in Christ Jesus. The Lord really bless you and may the Lord increase you because hope is your portion. My name is Pastor Smith from the Lord Reigns Ministries in Ruaka, not Ruaka, but Ruaka Town. And it's been a bless, it's been a great blessing and joy sharing the word of God this morning on the shift program. The Lord bless you. Shalom, shalom. See you tomorrow again. Amen. Enjoy your day.